everyone so in this video I'm going to show you uh, kind of an unboxing of what you get when you buy the Haven View Countryside Composite Railing Rail Kit so on the side of it it gives you a list of everything included but I'll just show you what it looks like when you open the box up so when you order this railing kit the balusters are included so you're if you're going with the composite square balusters will come with that this particular kit I'm getting the round aluminum. They're all individually bagged. Keeps nice and protected. The box calls it a crush block, foot block. Here's the various pieces of the hardware. That looks like it is for the crush block, it is. Here's all your stainless steel screws and your brackets to mount to the post. You also have your top rail and your bottom rail you also get two of the templates for putting onto your post and your handy instruction guide it's good to remember is every time you get a rail kit you get all of this and so on a job site, if you're having multiple rail kits, you should have a plethora of install guides and the jigs. In this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step on how to install Fiberon Havenview Countryside Railing. So, step one, after the construction of the framing, you're going to have your flush and plumb 4x4. You take your composite sleeve. Slide it right on over. You want to make sure you have enough um, cut off there that's not sticking up. The post does its own spacing. Pretty nice, good fit. Step two, get your skirt, slide it down. Next thing is first you're going to measure for your bottom railing. Measure your bottom rail. Go from bottom to bottom, use a skirt. 61 and 9 sixteenths. Actually, I'm gonna do 61 and 5 eighths. Then you take your bottom rail. And the big mistake that a lot of people do when they do this type of rail is all these pre-drill holes. And so people will just start from one end and do the measurement and then their holes are off skew so then your balusters are going to have weird spacing on one end to the other and so you have to have, take the total measurement of your bottom rail minus the length of your distance and then take the remainder and divide it by two and cut that distance off each end of the bottom rail okay once you get that h bar cut you're going to set it to the side until step number seven in the guidebook. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to drill the balusters into the bottom rail. So you're gonna get the pre-divided screws. You're gonna get 20 of these, 20 of these which are the same. They're number 10 inch and a half screws. You're gonna have 10 of these which are flathead which will be used for the top later. So if we grab these, walk you over to how I got going here. So something pretty cool about the box is it has these slots specifically designed to hold the balusters in place. It said specifically for the square ones where it's needed, but it's going to be handy for these round ones as well. So I have it kind of staged up so I can assembly line it, but important note of when you start doing this, especially when you install it, is on the bottom rail you'll see this lip. And that's actually a safety feature um, to prevent the balusters from being kicked out. So when you install your bottom rail, you always want the lip towards the, the field or the yard and then not towards the decking. Because this, if someone were to push on the baluster, this would catch it if the screw were to come out. So what I'm going to do is simply go like that. I'm going to Stick a little screw through there. 
and line up my line up oops, sorry kind of pre-stick the baluster in like that and then just drill it make sure you don't over tighten use a drill set the chuck to probably a medium okay so once I have my bottom rail cut next step is to cut the H bar so the H bar when you get it in the package it comes slipped inside of the top rail and it has its own protective sleeve so you get it out be careful because this is metal which adds a lot of strength to the railing system but it does the edges so if you're building on the deck i wouldn't slide it around too much especially in the corners you might cut it let's take it out of the sleeve here so the big thing to consider is to always keep in mind is keeping these holes aligned or else you're gonna have some angled balusters so the trick for this is you just kind of lay it in here it's not gonna fit perfectly because it's not designed to lay in the bottom rail it's designed to sit in the top rail and you just kind of eyeball through there and you, you can see the ground underneath you can see my there you go see the ground underneath and you get those just kind of eyeballed and then that's when you can just go and you mark, you do a rough mark there like that. But that's not where you're actually cutting because the directions say you want 7 16ths from both end, or 7 16ths total cut off. Actually, the actual measurement is you want 7 30 seconds total cut off from each end to allow for the internal brackets that this will lie on. So you take that line minus 730 seconds and then you cut all right so now we're back to the H bar and we are going to install the H bar brackets and these are the plastic pieces I'll connect the top rail to the post sleeve so you'll notice there's some uh, details about it this is triangle shape and if you can see it there's some direction there it says towards deck with an arrow and so you're wondering which way the towards deck is. Well, you have the holes, you have the baluster holes there, and you have these holes that run alongside of it. You want the arrow pointing away from the holes that run alongside of it, because they're only on one side. That's the easiest way to remember. And you can tell there's that slit in there. And the slit is actually going to go on those little grooves you see there. And so it'll slide on just like that and sits flush and then you'll get the 5-8 self-tapping screws and put them in and then it'll just kind of pressure fit itself in there just like that and the next one just like that and it is surprisingly secure and easy to install all right, so next step is we're going to attach the H-bar to the balusters, which are already attached to the bottom rail. So I'll take a little moment here to size track. If we were going to be using the composite balusters, this is how you'd want to do it. You'd leave it in the jig you have, and then you would have the composite balusters sitting there, and then you'd put the H-bar over them, and you'd be screwing in the composite balusters through this side hole right there. And so it looks something kind of it looks something kind of like that. But we're using metal balusters, so we will just be screwing it through these pre-drilled holes on this side. And that's that. So next we're going to pre-install the bottom bracket. So a couple of things to note here against a triangular shape. You want the flat side towards the deck and not the triangle side. So if you or the angled side, if you have the angle side there, then it'd be easy er for someone to push the bottom rail and possibly have it like bend and snap off that. So you want to make sure that flat side is towards the deck. So using our provided cardboard jig here, 
It had some grooves in it, so you just kind of pre-bend those to help you get aligned. And then insert the bracket there, keep it center. And then using the two and a half inch screws are provided, you just drill two of them into the bottom of each guy. All right, next step, once your brackets are mounted at the bottom, you gotta put your foot block, crush block, depends on your terms, on. So it's a two piece unit, so you have this plastic holder here that you put one screw in and there's an open side and a closed side. Again, you want your closed side facing out towards your field to prevent any slipping. Then you want to find the approximate middle of your deck or I mean your rail section and the plastic holder fits in just kind of like that. And then using the provided screws, screw in there and you screw in there and that is your crush block. Once you have the foot block on, down there, you'll take the whole railing assembly and you'll put it on your two bottom rail brackets. And then you'll want to make sure that this is centered so you got some wobble there. So you can use a, you know, a multitude of things. You can measure, tape it, um, pencil, all the different things. And once you get that centered, you're gonna use the two and a half inch screws I provided and right in that jig, okay. go down to those two on both sides. So once you have your top screws in and secure, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna measure from this point to that point and cut your top rail. And this is one of the most important cuts because if you are too tight and you squeeze it on, you can mar the finish. And if you're uh, too short on your cut, then you can see the gap, which isn't the premier look everyone's trying to get. Okay, so the final bit to this railing is once you get your top part cut, you slide it over. You did a, you did a decent job on that. And there should be some remaining one and a half inch screws. And you fasten them from the bottom up through the aluminum piece. They're self-tapping, so no problem. And that should lock the railing in place. And then you get your post caps and slide them on. And you're good to go.